What's up guys, Steros Cousin here, back with another tutorial. In this one, we're going to take a look at useRef, a very powerful hook that is used whenever you want to reference a value that is not needed for rendering. Make sure to watch until the end of the video because I'm really going to be covering everything there is to know about useRef and also some very important points that if you do watch until the end, I can promise you that you're most likely not going to have to need to watch another video on useRef ever again. Sound good? Cool. Let's jump on my computer screen and talk about useRef. Cool. So, useRef. Honestly, I've thought about this quite a while, and I think the best way and the simplest way to really think about this is think about ref as state, something similar to state in the sense that you can hold and mutate values that are used in your component. But the main difference is that unlike state, ref does not trigger a re-render of the component and ref values are not used in the return body of the actual component. It's not used for something that you're rendering. It's a hook that is used for values that are not needed for rendering. So the best way for us to really understand this is to look at the simple example that I have here and compare state to ref and see how they both behave and see the differences between the two. So this application here, as you can see, is really simple. It has a count from state, right? This count variable here uses use state. It is initialized to zero. We have the set count updater function to update it. And by the way, if you're not familiar with use state, I have a whole video about that. It's in the same playlist that you're watching this video now. So if you're unfamiliar, you want to learn more about use state, make sure to go check out that video first. Then we have another count, but this one through use ref. And this one as well is initialized with a value of zero. Then we have this handle increment function, which is attached to this button right here. And when clicked, it will first set the count to count plus one. So update the state count to count plus one incremented by one. And then it will do the same thing to the ref. It will increment the ref by one. Now, this dot current thing here is actually how you access values and how you mutate values in your ref. The value of a ref is always going to be inside of this dot current property. Whatever the value is, in our case, it's zero, it's a number. If it was an input, if it was anything else, you would always access and mutate it with the dot current property. So this line here, 11, is just taking the value and it's doing plus plus, which is JavaScript notation for incremented by one. So these two lines are doing the same thing just for both pieces of not state, but both counts essentially. And then we are logging the state count and we are logging the ref count, right? So let's see what happens if I do this, if I open up the console and then clear everything, what will happen when I press increment? So I press increment and first of all, the count has been updated to one because the count here is used in this return function and it's displayed here, this is the count from the state. So the state count, we know that is now one as a result of me pressing this increment button. If we look here at the console, we're gonna see that state logged as zero and ref logged as one. Now this is very interesting and I want you to pay attention because this is really important that you understand why state logged is zero and why ref logged is one. So looking at this function here, let's first talk about the state, right? We are incrementing the state and then we are console logging the state after it has been incremented. Just like I talked about in the video that I did on use state, state updates, one particular property that they have is that they happen and they trigger a new render, a new render of the component and the updated value is only accessible in that new render. So what React is going to do when we do this set count count plus one is it's going to update the state of count to count plus one. It's going to then continue running the body of the function, running any other hooks or anything else that we might have in this component, right? It doesn't stop rendering altogether just because we're updating the state. It's going to continue to finish the work. And then once all of the work has been done, it's going to then trigger a re-render and that re-render is going to have access to the new value, which is how we're seeing it here on the screen, right? This is because the component has re-rendered since we press this increment button. And in that next render, we have access to the new updated value, which is one. However, this console log here is not running in the next render. 
it's still running in that first initial render when we click the button. So when, even though we did set count here, that value, as we said, is only accessible in the next render. And so this console log here is going to reference the old value, which was zero, right? That is how use state works. Only in the next render, which in our case, only when we press this increment button again, will we then have access to the new value of that previous render. So if I do this, you see that now we have access to state one, right? That was the updated value of the previous render. However, as you can see, now we're at count two, right? We're always lagging behind one render. That is okay, that is normal, that is how use state works, right? But now, if you look at ref, it's different. Ref, right, logged one right off the bat, and then I press the button again, and it logged two right off the bat. So it functions very differently than you state, and that's okay, that's expected. Ref will allow you to make updates and to read the updated value instantly without waiting for a re-render. And the reason you don't wait for a re-render is because use ref doesn't even trigger a new re-render in the first place. That's not what it's for. If you need a new re-render, then you have to use state. If you don't, then you use use ref. That is what I meant in the beginning of the video when I said that use ref is a hook that is used for a value that is not needed for rendering. That is how we're able to have access to this new value right away. So when you increment the count of the ref here, you can console log it right away and get access to the new value right away. That is a property of ref, of use ref. Now, let me drive your attention to what happens if instead of this count here, instead of the state count in our return function, what happens if I replace this with the ref? So I'll do ref.current, count ref.current, and then in the increment function, I'm just going to get rid of anything about state because I don't want to trigger a re-render through state, right? I only want to manipulate the ref and see how our component behaves now. So I'm just going to refresh so we have a clean slate. And if I press increment, the count stayed at zero, but the ref logged as one. I press increment again, the count still stays at zero, but the ref logged at two, right? This is interesting, but by now, hopefully it should make sense. Refs do not cause a component to re-render. And so if you were to use it inside of this return function, you would not get the updated value because that does not trigger a component to re-render. You would only get the updated value if you have something else that triggers the component to re-render. For example, if we re-added the set count here and then just refreshed, we would increment again and now we would see ref1 and count1 increment again, ref2, and count2. We're getting the most up-to-date value, but not because of ref. We're getting it because of state, because of this set count here. That is what is causing the component to re-render, to trigger a re-render, so that we get access to the most up-to-date value. And so that's what I meant, that you should never use ref inside of this return function, because your application is not going to work as expected, and you're going to use ref for something that it's not intended to be used for. And now let's talk about another use case of ref, one that you might be more familiar with, which is using it with input elements or any other HTML element. In this case, I just have a simple ref, which can be of type HTML input element or null. And then we are passing it here to this input element inside of the return function. So this is fine, right? We're not using dot current here. We're just passing the reference of the ref to this input component. And this is allowed. This is one of the only use cases where you can use a ref ref directly in the return function. And the reason you do this is because if you do that, React is going to handle setting the dot current property of the ref to the input as long as it's mounted, right? The moment that the input becomes unmounted, whether the component unmounts or some other reason, React is going to automatically handle removing the dot current from the ref, right? So you get that benefit if you do it this way. And doing it this way, right, you have a ref, you pass it here to the input, you can then access some of the functions from that input. Like for example, this focus function right here. 
This use effect, what we'll do is when the component is mounted and everything else is rendered, because hooks always run after things are rendered, this input ref will be set by React automatically to this input. And then you can call input ref dot current question mark, right? Because we've defined it as a type that it can be null, right? So TypeScript doesn't know that React will automatically handle this for us. But you can call the focus function on this input on mount, right? Which is going to focus here if I just refresh the page. It's going to automatically focus the input on mount, which is a very useful thing to have in an application. Perhaps you have a form, right? And you want to facilitate the user experience by having the first input that makes sense be automatically focused on mobile. That's also going to trigger the keyboard, right? This is a feature that you would want. You would have to use a ref to accomplish that feature. So refs, beside using values that are not needed for rendering, are also useful if you want to access directly HTML DOM elements and call functions on those elements. You can also use it, perhaps you've used it as well, with third-party libraries that create a ref and then expose that ref along with some functions so that you can access from anywhere the functions of inside of that component. That is also a use case for ref, although that's not usually one that you would write yourself. You would just more generally create a ref and pass it and then by the document documentation, just read of the different functions that you can call and work on it that way. Still, refs are a very powerful feature in React and you really have to spend the time to understand how they work, what they're used for, what's the difference between ref and state, and how you can use it with elements and also in third party libraries. Please take the time to really focus and pun intended, right, focus, really focus and understand what ref is and how to use it and you will be a much better React developer. Cool. So there you go. Another tutorial in the books. This was used ref. I really hope that now you have a better understanding of this hook and how to use it. And you can now go and work on it in your own applications. Try it out. Try the difference between that and state. And like I said, you will become a much better developer. Spend all the time that you need and that is required to really properly understand this. If you've enjoyed this video, if you got any value from it whatsoever, please do make sure to leave a subscribe, leave a like, because it really does help me out a lot. It shows me that you enjoy this type of content and that you want more and trust me as you can see i'm publishing a lot of these tutorials and there's a lot more coming i love doing this also if you want to learn more about react and just be part of a community of react developers and also have access to me to answer your questions look at your code help you become a better developer i've created a discord for react developers there's a link in the description you can join it's completely for free we have about like 100 members and growing and i'm there every day answering questions reviewing code and i'm trying to create the best community of react developers on the internet so if that's of interest to you there's a link in the description make sure to go there and join and I would love to see you on the Discord. With that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.